Good morning, and welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Janet Smith. Please stand for the opening antiphon. O gates, lift high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who, seeing the, human, seeing the human race fallen into death, willed to redeem it by the coming of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that those who confess his incarnation with humble fervor may merit his company as their Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed a young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. She left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord, my the bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap, he lifts up the poor to seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessing from O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, 
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this generation, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from the thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. must have read my mind and known that I was going to preach on a certain thing and so gave me the uh, wireless mic to make it a little bit easier to point things out. So for those of you who have been following our Facebook posts or some of our homilies, it's not been every homily, but some of our homilies, you'll know that we've been spending a lot of time focusing on the O antiphons, those antiphons that come up during the Liturgy of the Hours at evening prayer and kind of highlight these key attributes and characteristics about Christ. Today it can be a little bit confusing depending on if you're in the right occupation or not. Because what today's is, is O Keystone. Now, what the heck's a Keystone? For those of you who aren't architects, like myself, you have to do a little research on this. A Keystone is that central stone that kind of solidifies an archway. So if you're using this arch, this is where I need the wireless mic, if you're using this arch as an example, as you're building that arch, you're stacking stone after stone after stone. And eventually, when you start to get into that curve, what's going to happen? If you don't have the right stone there to solidify it, it's going to collapse in on itself, or it's going to collapse out on itself. One way or the other, it won't stand. You need that central stone right at the apex of the curve to bring it together and hold it in place. Without that keystone, the whole thing's uh, crumbles. Now, I don't know if it's just simple word choice or if there actually is a substantial difference, but another one you'll see in some of the Psalms is cornerstone. In Psalm 118, you have that phrase, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now, if, for those of you who are architects or physicists, if there is a difference, you can tell me later. But from my limited understanding, the uh, fundamental idea behind one or the other is still the same that it's a load-bearing stone. It's the stone on which the whole structure rests and depends. And with, if you remove it, or even remove a piece of it, and the whole structure will eventually collapse. Christ is that keystone for the whole church. Without, that, without Christ holding everything together, the structure of the church collapses. And this is an important reminder for us in today's society because a lot of today, a lot of people today, Christian and non-Christian alike, get so caught up in the visible side of the church that we forget that the church is more than just a physical building or even the visible hierarchy. We often start to get caught up in thinking that the Pope is the leader of the church. And we forget that the Pope is merely the steward of Christ. He is the visible leader of the visible church, but Christ is ultimately the true head, the true leader of the church. He is the one on which the whole thing is built, not the Pope. Uh, and we can see how that plays out in history itself. Over the last 500 years, what have we seen? 
Luther, to give, to be somewhat fair to him, give him some credit, assuming his intentions were simply to combat corruption in the church, uh, his original intention then would have been honorable, to root out the corruption and call, people, and call the church back to her true mission. But the problem, though, was he took things too far. And we see that just in the very second of his theses. The first thesis is Christ is the source of all forgiveness of sins. That's correct. Thesis two, there is no sacramental absolution in confession. That's obviously wrong. That's taking it beyond just simple rooting out corruption. So Luther, what he sought to, eventually sought to do was separate himself from the sacramental practice, the sacramental grace. He sought to remove that divine keystone from the structure of the church. And what's been the result? Splintering after splintering after splintering. To the point now we have, what is it, 26, 27,000 denominations? We started with one church, then we had one church and four splinter groups, and now we've got all these fragments spread throughout the Western world. The church herself, however, has remained strong. Despite numerous attempts from both outside and inside to bring that church down, the church still stands strong. Because Christ, the divine keystone, still stands there holding her up. We remain faithful to Christ, and therefore we, the church, stay strong. As we, re as we turn now to our altar, let's receive that keystone into ourselves so that we might be able to remain strong in the face of whatever challenges either today in particular, or this week, or 2021, has to offer us. Let's remain strong and built firmly on Christ, that we can weather whatever storms come our way. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. confidence before God, knowing that he will do great things for us. For the church, may the Lord continue to guide her in carrying out his saving work this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For others who govern, may the Holy Spirit bless them with an abundance of understanding and prudence. of your Son, we ask that you hear and answer our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord.
answers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, for the Almighty has done great things for me.
our prayer of spiritual communion for those watching at home who are unable to receive at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment...